Welcome to Leaders Edge Network. This is part six of our KV Core Basic Training, where we will concentrate on the lead engine tools, specifically landing pages and squeeze pages. I'm Deanna Faye Brown, the team leader for the Connection Realtors Mega Icon team and a member of Leaders Edge Network. You've joined session six of our KV Core Basic Training. With sessions five and six, we're now beginning to pivot from actually understanding and creating our profile and building our KV Core account and website to now leveraging the tools and functionality that exist on this platform to reach out to our clients on a regular basis and to build that client database through lead generation. Today, we're gonna to be spending our time talking about KV Core as a true lead engine tool. Just like the engine drives the car, the lead engine functionality in KV Core will drive your lead generation platform. It's important as we spend time talking about some of these tools that you understand the difference between three types of pages, your home page, a landing page, and a squeeze page. The home page is the entryway to your website. It's your welcome mat. Understand that when you drive traffic to your website, you're looking for that traffic to spend time there, maybe to learn about you, your biography, your testimonials, maybe to learn something about the real estate process, perhaps to generate a real estate search. Maybe it's even to leverage the lender relationship that you might um, have built into your website. The idea is that your homepage welcomes a visitor in and gives them the opportunity to learn and become educated and hopefully then build trust in you and in the brand and it promotes engagement between you and the visitor to your site. Landing pages and squeeze pages are different. Whereas a home page encourages time, commitment, exploration, a landing page and a squeeze page are designed to be quick, they're designed to draw attention, and they're designed to call to action. They are not part of your website. Typically, you build a landing page or a squeeze page and then tie it to some sort of advertising campaign, whether it's Google advertising or Facebook advertising. There's typically a singular purpose to a landing page, to draw traffic in based on that one singular purpose, get the call to action from the visitor, and then ultimately create that visitor as a lead in your KV Core account. A squeeze page is like a mini landing page, which is gonna be even more specific than the landing page itself. Where a landing page might be more often tied to an ad campaign, typically one that's a paid campaign, a squeeze page is something that you can create quickly, even on the fly, and then just copy and paste links oftentimes right into your social media accounts, your Facebook, your Instagram, your Twitter accounts, for example. So where we're gonna concentrate our time today is on how to create a landing page, and how to create a squeeze page in KV Core. Look at what happens with As we our first talk about landing up pages, KV Core. a couple of quick notes, and you might want to actually take a screenshot okay, so here's of this my website. Phone. Just as a reminder, Remember, I've talked about a lot of the other work that we've done in so KV I have Core has been forgiving on my site, very flexible. Uh, I'll always somebody say, don't worry, you're not going to break it. To learn about landing me, pages, learn about my brand, learn about my background, understanding has the ability to leverage a lender relationship of this particular They have the ability to really help you avoid And then they have the ability I've really mess up and repeat I've spoken about previously of learning how to create work a to define page. myself in Burlington so County. One thing that I recommend so is to map out your landing page ahead When of time. somebody comes to my Once website, you've been able to go through the our experience here is meant to understand be, the purpose and the functionality um, like I said, of a landing page. Really take the time to map it out on paper. And it's going to involve some time what you want to identify as your hook, right? your subheader. Hopefully they're going to spend points, a little time doing a property your search. Your hashtag. You want to learn a little bit about your background. Where you want to test visitors. When they stop in on your landing page. There on this behalf of the visitor sense wanting to understand moment. more about me. It's important to also recognize a landing page that on the other hand is going to have a very specific going to delete something It's going to be designed to get once you delete from you whoever is visiting that landing page. I think page. a lot of us are very used to 
goes to the website to edit, hoping for double a 10 clicking will delete or even 20 minute the experience. Page a landing page is like a 30 second experience. And then the last thing, experience. this is a really important You're looking one. to do Once something, you complete your you landing call page that before you do that landing with page to action, whether it's that ultimately um, captures exported their contact into a, information a Google ad campaign, and pulls them and into ad your KB core. Make okay. sure that you save that link. You're going to create a landing page, page as we go through, and then the you're going to have to do encourage something you to create with that landing page. Most Once often, you've used that link, you'll see it. It doesn't being save anywhere with with within your either Facebook, Facebook account, advertising. So there won't be a place for you to go back and get it. And that's where you're going to be making decisions about how much that you want to pay somewhere um, permanently. Homepage. Okay, let's get website, started on landing. You're pages. talking about your $85 a month commitment to EXP, and you're getting that KV Core uh, website and content essentially for free. Landing page, you have the ability now to create the landing page, but it's up to you what kind of marketing budget you want to build to leverage that landing page and put it into play. Okay. The last thing that we're going to talk about today is a squeeze page. Squeeze page is like a mini landing page um, where a landing page itself, you're going to have a lot of creativity and customization, personalization. And like we've talked about, I think pretty much week after week, think about, you know, think outside the box, be unique and creative. Squeeze pages are much more sort of templated. There are four different formats that KV Core puts out there, and we'll go over those. But those are meant to be um, even quicker, even faster. Um, but again, calling to action, trying to get somebody to either click on it, provide you with an email address, a cell phone number, and you'll see squeeze pages used a lot in social media. So let's take a look at how we would create a landing page. Um, and I want to give you an example of what, what one looks like before we even start with the actual template itself. Okay, so here's one that I've created. I encourage you as we go through this, you might want to take a picture of these few notes because experience um, was my guide here. When it comes to landing pages, do what you can once you see our example today and you see how easy they are to create, realize that there are some um, roadblocks. There's definitely some potholes. It's a little bit finicky when you're in there actually customizing your landing page. So the more you can have mapped out ahead of time, the better. The other two things that I want to really stress, as soon as you double click something, it will delete it from the landing page and you can't get it back. I learned this lesson the hard way through um, multiple double clicks and starting over multiple times as well. Um, so I encourage you to be mindful of how you click when you're customizing your landing page. And then the last thing, which you'll see as we go through our example, is once you're done and you get to your finished product, it won't save anywhere. So it's really important that from the beginning, I encourage you to create a spreadsheet or a Google Sheet where you can copy and paste the link for any completed landing page that you design so that you can go back to it and use it later. If it's something that you find effective um, and you want to recreate it or reuse it, if you just have the link, you can always go back and upload it into a new Google ad or a new Facebook ad for use down the road. So I did that, you'll see here, just created a simple, um, uh, like I said, spreadsheet where I'm just copying and pasting the link. And I'm also making reference to when I created it, the hashtag that I used, which you'll see in a moment. And then anytime that I'm using the link, I'm going to go ahead and also update my spreadsheet for that as well. So I went ahead and populated this link in some Facebook advertising that I set up yesterday. Okay, so let's head back to KV Core and take a look first at the landing page that I created. So you'll see there is an image in the background. There's going to be the EXP logo at the top. And then there are some things that you'll have the ability to customize. You're going to have this header line here. Okay, so I went ahead and you'll see the theme of my landing page is pulling someone in for open house tours. Okay. So you'll have the title page, or excuse me, the title line, and then right below it, you'll have like a subheader that you'll be able to customize. You're also gonna have four bullet points, again, fully customizable, and each bullet point, each check mark will have the ability to include additional description below it. 
you can delete the description, you can edit the description, or you can completely eliminate bullet points, depending on how you want your landing page to look. Below that, you're going to see where we're actually working to capture information from a visitor to this landing page, an email address, a cell phone, and then there's going to be a button. So they're going to fill out their information and they're going to click on that button to complete action on their end. Okay, makes sense so far. And then the last thing at the bottom is you're going to see if there are, there's going to be one more sort of footer, one more last message that you can share with your visitor. Okay, so in my case, you'll see that my landing page has cell phone optional. If I could just remind everybody to mute too. You'll see that mine has cell phone optional. You'll have the ability to either make it optional or required. So what I chose to do is in my landing page, I went with a soft route. I made it optional, but then I included a, a note at the bottom saying, hey, if you provide your cell phone number and you have questions, you know, it, it's an easy way for me to get a hold of you and we can talk. Okay. So let's take a look. Let's go back to KV Core and actually work on creating a landing page. The way that we're going to do that is you're going to go to Lead Engine and you're going to go to Build a Landing Page. The whole purpose of a landing page, remember, is calling a visitor to action. You want them to either respond to an offer, um, follow your, um, you know, join up for a newsletter, receive a free market analysis. In my case, I created something to sign up for an, a weekly open house listing. But you can go beyond sort of the more obvious real estate choices and think about other ways that you can leverage a landing page. I showed you the open house. What we're going to do as I talk through the example with you, let's say that you and your local market are sponsoring a sports team and you want to be able to have that sports team, um, you want to um, host a ice cream truck at the end of the season to say thank you to everybody, you know, have a you know great season or maybe a way to kick off the season. But what you want to do is sort of very um, quietly take advantage of trying to capture all of these individuals that you've gotten to know through your sports sponsorship or maybe through your kids' activities and try to pull them into your real estate business as potential real estate leads. So you can use a landing page that you can where you can share that link with um, the coach or, or the, the team or whatever the admin on the sports side and say, hey, if you just send out this link, anybody that wants to participate and receive a free ice cream cone, all they have to do is sign up and they'll get an email from me with a coupon for a free ice cream cone on whatever day. Okay, so let's do that. Let's see how that would look. So from KV Core, I went to go in to create a landing page. You're going to have to select your domain. If all you have is the standard KV Core account that's provided to you by eXp, you'll just have one domain there. If you have a team, you might see multiple. And if you've gone ahead and um, if you have other domains that are pointing into this domain, you might again see multiple options here. But once you click on the domain that you want to create the landing page for, you're going to click on Start Building, and you're going to come to this point. Remember what I said. Um, once you double click on something, it will remove it completely and you can't undo to get it back. You would have to start over. So just be mindful of that from the beginning. Up at the top, we're going to leave it to show that this is for lead generation purposes. You can get um, even more advanced, another common um, platform or format that people like to use is video plus lead where you can actually embed a video into a landing page that looks like this. We're just going to do a straight, um, you know, the most basic page here today. So what you're going to want to do, understand that when a person comes to the landing page and is called to action and they provide their information and they click on that button at the bottom here, it's not only going to provide them with whatever they've signed up for, but it's also going to automatically import that person into your KV Core as a new lead. You want to be able to hashtag them based on how you obtain that lead. So in this case, I'm going to call it ice cream. Okay, so um, something that 
readily identifies how this person came to me through my ice cream campaign, okay? Whatever I type here in this next box will automatically translate down to this orange submit button. So submit is replaced with whatever label or tag you wanna provide. And you'll notice as soon as you type, it'll update here, okay, on the button. Then you're gonna have the ability to create a URL. A, the URL that you wanna use, you wanna somehow tie people back to your website. The important part of that is that, so in your landing page, they click this button, they're automatically gonna be imported into your KV Core. From there, if you direct them to your website here, then you are also going to be able to track all of their clicks and all of their searches from within your KV Core, all under their profile once they're imported. Okay. So if I um, were to direct somebody to a website other than my KV Core website, for example, if I directed them to my Facebook account or if I directed them, let's say in this case, to the, to the sports team website, understand that you're going to lose that functionality to be able to track anybody's activity on your website. In my case, when I go to, when somebody clicks on get open houses, it's going to start a campaign for them, pulling them into my KV core, but it's also going to take them directly to my website where I have it all set up for an open house search where they can see any upcoming open houses that are posted in our MLS for that weekend, okay? So in this case, I'm gonna, just gonna go ahead and use my website. For the ice cream, I'm not gonna do anything um, uh, more customized than that. But once we go through and create this particular landing page, I can go back and show you how to do that open house, um, the open house URL which is pretty cool. For my background, that's gonna be the picture that you see on the back of the screen. I'm gonna just go with something that's sort of environmentally friendly, more of a subtle real estate, trying to go with the outdoors theme. You can also, if you scroll down to the bottom of the list, you'll see that you can create a custom background, or you can also, if you are looking to create a landing page that's property specific, you can simply enter the MLS number and it will pull the primary image from that MLS listing, which is really cool. If you are gonna use a custom background, just understand that it has to be a web-based photo. It can't be like a JPEG photo that you're just uploading from a local file. It's gotta actually be a web-based image. Um, so then, in that case, you want to make sure not only is the format correct, but that you don't have any copyright issues in leveraging that web-based um, format, okay? But there's a lot of things that you can do. You can go through, just like we've done with some of the other like website components, you can go through and, and change and try as many different looks as you like, and it won't hurt anything, okay? So let's say we're ready to go ahead and update our content. So remember, no double clicks just going to click once. Right now it says your town real estate deals, and I'm going to change that to thank you for supporting, let's say, Marlton Baseball. Okay. Remember, one click. Here's my subheader. Let's celebrate a great season with some ice cream. Um, and now I want to add a couple of bullet points. So let's say, Sign up below to get your free cone coupon. Okay, and maybe I wanna say one other thing here. Okay. 
Okay, and maybe I don't want a tagline here, so I just deleted that. So let's say I only wanted two bullet points. So I can easily double click on these two lower points and see how they just disappear. Once they do that though, I can't get them back. So if the double click is a mistake and you really wanted four bullet points, uh, you'd go back and start over, okay? So the other thing that you can do once you've gone ahead and edited all this content, come below the sign up section and remember that there's one last place where you can urge someone to action. Um, at this point for the ice cream, I don't wanna do anything there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete it. Last thing before I hit save is I'm gonna go back up to the top and I have the ability to identify what lead type this would be. In this case, I'm trying to pull somebody in from a, um, not a specific buyer or seller campaign for an example, or a renter campaign. This is not an attraction campaign for new agents. This could be anybody that might potentially convert to a real estate lead buyer, seller, or otherwise down the road. So I'm not gonna specify a lead type here. Once I have all of my content ready to go, we're gonna hit the save button. This is the other really finicky point about creating a landing page in KV Core. You only get one save. And once you get that one save, that's when you're gonna wanna make sure that you copy that link somewhere because once it's gone, it's gone. And the only way that you can get it back is if you have that saved link. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. You're gonna get that warning, letting you know that once you hit save, there will be no edits. But understand that if you don't like it or if, um, if you decide that you it's not working for you, no harm, no foul. You haven't done anything with it or put it anywhere um, to actually put it into action, if you will. Um, so not a total panic. It just might mean that you have to create things a few times, you know, go around the block a few times to get to the point where you're ready to go with your landing page. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here. Okay, and now you'll notice what happens is that it's taken away all of that, um, all of those sort of toolbars or um, fields at the top where I needed to add some of that customization. And now I'm just left with the landing page itself and what it will look like to my visitors. I'm immediately going to go up to the top, going to go up to my browser, and I'm going to copy that entire link. And I'm going to go right over to my spreadsheet or Google Sheet. And I'm going to paste that link so that I don't lose it. Okay. I'll make a note of when I created it. It's also important because it won't be referenced anywhere. What the hashtag was that I used to associate with this particular um, landing page. So I used ice cream. And let's say for today, we're going to do um, an ice cream thank you email. Okay. We're going to create that. So that's how the landing page works to get it set up. Does that make sense so far? Are there any questions, any confusion? Okay, good. So that's a pretty basic beginning, but now it's not gonna work for you until you actually put it into action. So let's say I have this link and going with the same theme, I have, you know, I wanna be able to provide ice cream, free ice cream to anybody who's supporting our baseball program. So they're going to go in, provide their email address, hopefully their cell phone to get their free cone. I need um, something to happen now when they come into my KV Core to trigger them to get an email with their coupon. So now I'm going to head back to KV Core. And I'm going to go back to marketing, which is where we spent some time last weekend. Under marketing, you can go to smart campaigns. Remember last week uh, in our last session, we spent time looking at the newsletter and how to create a custom newsletter. Let's go back where we found that newsletter back to templates. And this time I'm just trying to find a, I know I'm gonna have to do some customization but I'm just trying to find a standard template that I can do as little manipulation as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I think there was one that was a thank you. So I'm just going to, under templates, under email, just going to type in the word thank. 
And here's one. Let's, let me take a look at this conversation starter, initial email. Remember, this is a KV Core template, which means that if I want to be able to modify it in any way, the first thing I'm going to have to do is hit this clone button. To clone it, what that will do is it'll create a copy that I can work from without compromising, changing, or editing the original templated version that KV Core puts out. Okay, so now I'm working in a, in a clone format. And one of the things that gives that away is that it's all it's done right now is rename that template with the word copy after it. What I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to leverage um, this format and I'm actually going to go into the advanced editor, which I'm going to show you in a second. We did that also the editor with our newsletter last week. I'm going to go ahead and rename this template. Just like I've recommended in the past, I encourage you to start with a unique identifier. I start with my name that will let me know when I go to search later for templates that this was one that I created and customized. Okay, so I'm going to call this um, Deanna Ice Cream. Thank you. Okay, and for my subject line, this is what the um, recipient of the email is going to see. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead, if I wanted to save any of this content um, before going in and adding, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to add an image and add a little more personality to this email. If I wanted to save any of this verbiage here, I would just highlight it and copy it before I get to the advanced editor. So let me show you that. I'm going to hit copy. Now I'm going to go into the advanced editor. So notice what happens when I do this is that it remembers that I changed the template name and it remembers that I changed the subject, but it removed the content that was previously filled in below. That's why I copied it. So now if I wanted to use it, I could simply paste it. To do that, we're going to work from these content buttons on the right hand side. First, I'm going to drag in an image. And you want to be able to you want to make sure that you see that drag it here button on the left hand side when you go to drop um, that content box. So here I've added an image. Then I'm going to go ahead and add a text box and drop it right below. Okay. So what I could do now is I could get rid of this um, prompt telling me to add my content, and I could simply paste to put that um, original template content back if that makes sense. So let's say here, I this is, remember, going to be the email that a person's going to receive for their free ice cream once they sign up on my landing page. So I'm going to hit the Browse button. I did a little bit of work ahead of time to um, download a photo from Shutterstock. I mentioned I do a lot on Shutterstock. So I found a photo that I liked with ice cream. So I just went into the image. I'm going to upload that image now. Now, remember, if you're uploading an image here to do any email campaigns, you want to make sure it's in JPEG format. So once I've up uploaded the photo, I'm going to go ahead and insert it. And now I don't actually want to use this content. I want to um, create something custom. Please print this email and Now, if I wanted to add something in here that was related to real estate, I could. But for me, let's say for right now, maybe I just want it to be, I want to be able to capture um, leads into my KV Core. So I'm going to go ahead and say, this is where I want to leave it. 
Um, you want to make sure, and I'm not going to address it here in detail, but you want to make sure that you're always addressing any compliance requirements, okay? So you can copy and paste in your full email signature here with any disclosures that are required. Just for ease of showing you how landing pages work, I'm not going to go into all of that. But once I get to the point where I'm satisfied with the content, I'm going to hit that clone template button. It's important that you do that because if you don't, it's not going to save any of your changes. Then if I wanted to go back and edit it more later, or if I just wanted to review it again, remember I started that template name with my name, Deanna. So it's going to make it a lot easier for me to search. So now I can easily find in a list of, you know, less than 10 options right now, as opposed to like the dozens of options that KV Core has templated. So here's my ice cream. Thank you. If I wanted to update it, I could just go back and hit edit. It's going to take a couple of seconds and then it's going to pull up everything that I had up until this point exactly the way that I had it. Remember the other thing that you can do, which is something that we experimented with uh, with our newsletter, is that you can also send a test. If you want to see what the <clears throat> recipient's experience will be like, you can simply click on send test and you will receive a copy of this email message to your EXP email or wherever that email forwards so that you can see how you like it on the receiving end. Go back and make any adjustments or updates as necessary till you're fully satisfied with it. And then you can just go back to the bottom and hit update template, okay? So now what I've done is I've created this email. So let's think about what steps we've taken so far. I created a landing page and I saved the link. So now I can provide that link to the baseball coach who's going to send it out to all the parents um, for them to be able to get their, um, click on it, and get their free cone, sign up for their coupon, right? Now I've created an email that says, you know, here, print this out for your free cone, but I need to tie that email creating a campaign with my traffic coming in from that landing page. Okay, the way that we're going to do that is now we go to smart campaigns. So we were in templates. Now we're going to go to my campaigns and we're going to build one. We're going to add a campaign. I'm going to create this campaign. Remember, we have a specific hashtag, a unique identifier for that landing page ice cream. So I'm going to say anytime that a lead comes into my KV Core, with the hashtag of ice cream, it will trigger this campaign. I can add additional information about the trigger. So when the hashtag value is um, ice cream, I can do that down here. Or you can say you don't have, wanna have a starter trigger. In this case, when somebody signs up, we want them to immediately receive their email with that coupon, okay? So we always wanna run it. Just going to move everybody's head here and go to next. I'm going to leave this campaign for everybody because remember, this is not specific to a particular um, client type. Could be apply, could apply to everybody. So here, this is just information that's going to be available for me to see. So I'm going to give the campaign a name. Uh, and then I'm going to give it a one or two sentence description if you feel like you need something more detailed, but um, maybe I'll make a note here that I sponsored the team. Okay, hit next. And it's going to review the information that I've submitted. So I'm saying that um, this campaign will start with our hashtag ice cream. So when a, a client comes in with that hashtag, it's automatically going to prompt this campaign to begin. It could be any buyer, seller, vendor, or otherwise. And I've given it some additional information, and I'm going to hit finish. So now I have created a campaign, but I haven't necessarily, like I haven't done anything with it. Right now, it's just like an empty room. So I'm going to go back and find my campaign. Remember, I called it ice cream for Marlton baseball. I can click on that campaign to start filling it up with what I want to do. 
Okay, so see right now, when I click on ice cream for baseball, there are no actions taken. So there's a campaign shell there, but we have to build the tasks that actually give that campaign life. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to this add action button. I'm gonna create an email, okay? The name of the email is going to be the ice cream coupon. And remember I created my template already. Here's my ice cream, thank you, okay? So my first task here, I'm giving the task a name, which is to deliver the ice cream coupon. And now I'm pulling in my template. It's gonna run from me to the contact and I want it to run immediately. If I didn't want it to run immediately, I could use the two bottom fields to identify how many minutes, hours, or days I wanted to pass before this action is taken. But the point here is that as soon as somebody signs up, I want them to receive the email for the free cone. So I'm going to add that. Okay, so you'll see now I have a task. Now I have life in my campaign set up to email immediately. It gives me an overview that it's going to be email coming from me to the contact. And I can always go back and preview what that would look like here. Okay, so there's my ice cream cone, my message. But now the whole point of KV Core is that you want to go beyond just giving them the coupon for the ice cream, right? You want to be able to start leveraging this as a contact in your KV Core. So you can add additional action items beyond that first coupon that will sort of gently remind somebody that you're in their market and can service their real estate needs. To do that, you can simply hit add action. You can decide what type of action that you want to take. Let's say for our case, we're going to send out an email, but you can do text, you can do call, or you can create a task, which is going to remind you to take some other action with that lead. Okay, let's say I'm going to go with email. And maybe I call it the ice cream follow-up. Now, I don't have a template for this one right now. So um, what I can do is I can select from any of the previous or any of the KV Core formatted templates, or I can go back if I wanted to, I could go back and create another template of my own. Remember the way that I do that is I just go back here to templates and I can create an email. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can find a welcome email. So here's one that's already formatted about somebody that if you think if you're thinking about selling your home. So maybe I want to go ahead and create a template that just reminds people, hey, if you're thinking of buying or selling, always keep me in mind. You can go through all of the templates. You can modify a template like we did by cloning it, by renaming it, and then you can pull it into your campaign like we did here, okay? You would just simply click on add action and then you can build out a campaign. Maybe for my ice cream um, campaign, maybe I wanna do something you know, seven days out, maybe I wanna do something 30 days out, maybe 60 days out. You know, it's, it's gonna depend on the population who I'm trying to reach, and how frequently I wanna be able to touch those leads, okay? Now let's circle back, let's talk about my first landing page that I showed you, open house. Um, we went through the ice cream example because I wanted you to be able to see that it really is pretty easy to create a landing page. But now let's go back to the open house landing page where I can show you some more of that functionality and how I'm more aggressive or um, time-driven smart campaign can be built out. So let's circle back to my website first. How did I go and create a link where if somebody goes and clicks on this, enters their email address, enters their cell phone, clicks on get, get open houses, how are they going to get to that content? So what I did is went to my website, simply, so I started out here at the homepage. I went on search. 
And then on the right hand side, I went to more filters. All I want to do is pull open houses. So if I scroll down to the general options and check off open house, I'm going to have to scroll back up a little bit because the open house filter will not work if I have a status selected. So I just have to uncheck active and then I'm going to go ahead and apply the filters. Now notice I'm going to get results. I have four open houses that are coming up that are um, currently identified through our MLS. Okay, I can go ahead if I wanted to and sort this information. Right now it's automatically set to sort by days on the website. Let's say for purposes of my content delivery, I don't want days on the website. Maybe I want the higher priced to the lower priced to appear first. So I can go ahead and set that sort. I'm just gonna go back in one more time. It's just a little bit finicky because it keeps trying to force a property status. So once I, I leave open house and remove that um, property status check, if I apply filter again, you see I'm gonna get the same four open house results, but now it's gonna put the more expensive properties at the top, okay? When I am done with the search, all I'm going to do is take this entire URL, this entire link up at the top, I'm going to highlight it, copy it. And then when I go over to my landing page, this is exactly where I would paste it and then just tab over. So this is what is going to drive the traffic. So somebody's going to sign up for an open house newsletter or notification. They're going to receive something immediate from me, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but then they're going to be driven to my website where they can go ahead and customize additional searches. Hopefully, they'll go ahead and bookmark my site and save it to do some additional searching down the road. Once they've done that, once they've signed up and gone to my website, then I'm going to have the ability to track everything that they do there, everything that they search, everything that they click on right from within my KV Core. Okay, I'll be able to go to, and the way that you would do that is you would just go into your smart CRM and you would find that contact, click on that contact, and then you would be able to see all of the activity for that particular um, lead. Okay. So that's the first component of the open house is making sure that I have that URL set up. The cool thing about the URL is that when I go back to that later, that search is going to produce results that are based on that moment in time and whatever the MLS results would be for that type of search for that moment in time. Okay. So now let's go back to KV Core. The other thing that I want to do is I have somebody who's now engaged who has said, yes, I want to go ahead and receive notifications from you about upcoming open houses. Now I need to do something with that. And that involves building a campaign. The way to do that is we go back to marketing, go into smart campaigns, and I've gone ahead and created a campaign of my own. I started with Deanna so I could easily find it later. And you'll see I have Deanna Open House Landing Page Leads. When I click on that, now I already went through and gave the campaign a name. I gave it a brief one-line description, okay, designed for those who request regular open house notifications, okay. And now I've gone ahead and built out a campaign that is date and task driven to help me hopefully convert this lead into a client. So I set it up where I created a unique email, and I'm going to show you this in preview. This is not our uh, ice cream cone. Now, this is a thank you email saying thank you for your interest in upcoming open houses. Now, remember, they've already been taken to my website to get the initial um, list of open houses. And this is my way of sending email content to say thank you for signing up. Okay. Now, what I've gone ahead and set up for every um, week after that is you'll see day seven, day 14, day 21 is I created an email where I can send an update of all the open houses to that client. 
So I leveraged an existing open house template that was already set up by KV Core. I went ahead and did just a small amount of editing to the content, to the message, to customize it to me. And then I went ahead and saved it as an email. I can pull that into my campaign now and I can set it for as many times as I want to go out to the client. So I added it every time that you see a new day here, I added it to this campaign to be able to reach out to the client weekly with a new open house listing. Now you'll notice in the middle of that, so they are set up to receive the thank you email. They're set up to receive the weekly listing and you'll see that I have four weekly listings. So day 7, 14, 21 and 28. And then you'll see another um, task that's set up for day 28. This is actually a text, it's not an email. And what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to reach out in an alternative way. So now everything up to this point has been through email communication. I've created some text communication, just saying, hey, I'm here, not sure if you've had a chance to review the properties, um, if, it's, if things aren't appealing to you, let me know, I can adjust the search. Hopefully sticking a toe in the water, engaging the client or prospective leads engagement. Remember too, that I can always go back to their profile under my smart CRM and see if they are opening these emails and if they are clicking on the link for the content, okay? So it's about leveraging the campaign. It's about creating the landing page to draw in the lead, then building a campaign around the lead to continue to take action. Getting them in is important, but then doing something with them um, becomes even more important. It won't automatically get you from a lead to a client, okay? So this is where the nurturing process comes in. So depending on the type of campaign that you're building, the type of landing page that you've created, you can build out your own custom campaign, or you can leverage one of the smart campaigns that KV Core makes available to you. Um, and recognize that you're not going to break anything, but just play around with it. It does, there is a bit of a learning curve, and a lot of this is just learning by doing, experimenting a little bit yourself. As with everything that we've done up until this point, I really encourage you to always invest some time in understanding your client's experience, okay? That's really important because if you can see what the client will experience in preview form, then it's really going to help you know whether you feel like your campaign is actually hitting your expectations so that it will hopefully meet and exceed the lead's expectations, okay? The other thing, once you've gone to this point, you've set up your landing page, you've got your, um, your link for that landing page, right? You've saved it somewhere. In this case, this is not like our ice cream example. In our ice cream example, we're going to go ahead and provide that link to the coach or the program that's going to push it out to the, to the moms and dads. In the case of an open house um, landing page, we actually want to use that in some advertising. And the way that you can do that is you can, a lot of people use Facebook. It doesn't have to be Facebook. There are um, certainly a number of platforms out there. But the way, and I'm not going to go into detail to... Um, show you on, on Facebook how to create an ad. But just the important point to understand here is that if you're on your Facebook business page and you're in the ad center, if you want to go ahead and create, and I just did that, something very simple with my Facebook ad, I only committed to a dollar a day. So in all of these six weeks that we've spoken, beyond your $85, the only thing that I really um, have urged you to do in terms of spend is pay the extra $25 or $30 for your own smart number. I think that's money well spent. And then spend a little bit of money here to experiment with Facebook ads. I just did a dollar a day to test the waters, get my feet wet, engage response, and see how it works. If I find any success here at all, then I'm going to ramp up my spend and I'm going to devote more dollars to my Facebook advertising. But I haven't even, I, I only started, I only activated uh, the Facebook ad about um, 12 hours ago, maybe 14 hours ago. And so I'm, I'm already getting some, some traction, right? I'm already getting some clicks. 
And so far, I've only spent 25 cents. So in my mind, that's a pretty good return, okay? But it's important that you, you have to take this next step. In order to make your landing page work, you have to draw people to the landing page, and then there has to be action on the back end with some campaign in KV Core. When you're ready to create your ad, the way that you can do that in the Ad Center, you just go to Create Ad. And when you create a new ad, the one thing that I do want to show you here, there's going to be a lot of things that you can do to customize. When you create an ad, it's going to automatically pull in some content from your um, business page, but you can go ahead and make any edits that you want. I encourage whatever edits that you make here, try to make them as consistent and uniform to your landing page as possible. So remember, my landing page was all about open houses. So I'm going to want my ad to be all about open houses. The other thing that I just want to let you know, to be able to copy that, that landing page link, when you go up to um, whatever your goal is, you want to be able to scroll down and choose get more website visitors. And when you click on that, I'm just going to move everybody's head again. When you click on get more website visitors and save, You'll notice that when you scroll down to see all of the editable items in your Facebook advertising, one of the things that you'll be able to do is add a URL. This is where you will copy and paste your landing page link. That's why it's so important because that you copy it somewhere because I've already gone ahead and done that landing page. I've moved on from it. But as soon as you leave that page, the only way that you can get it back is if you have that link saved somewhere. So I would take this open house link, go ahead and copy it right into my uh, website URL here in Facebook, make all of the other edits and updates. I could upload images. I can add content. You can set your budget all here in um, the ad center and then go ahead and hit promote now. So then the important thing for you after that's done is that you have to make sure that you're going back to your Facebook page and monitoring the activity and the results that you're getting there. And then you also want to make sure that you're going back into your KV Core and monitoring your campaigns, taking a look at your smart CRM to see what leads you're pulling in from that open house campaign. Notice that when I created a hashtag for my open house um, landing page, I actually called it open house landing, as opposed to something, you know, maybe I have an actual open house on a property at some point down the road. When I have a new lead that comes into my KV core, when they're given this hashtag, I will know specifically that they came to me because they got to my open house landing page. So that's going to tell me that my landing page is working and I should continue to leverage it and use it maybe in other places, maybe even ramp up my advertising beyond Facebook. If I don't see traffic coming into my KV core from this hashtag, then that's gonna tell me the opposite is true. I have to troubleshoot why I'm not getting that traffic. Is my advertising source not effective? Is my budget too light? Um, am I not getting in front of the people that I should be getting in front of? What changes do I need to make? If I'm getting them in, but then I'm not converting them, then that maybe tells me that I need to look at my campaign and figure out how I can do a better job of meeting and exceeding that leads expectations over the course of time so that ultimately they feel like they know me, can trust in me, and can come to me when they have a real estate need. Okay, so that's how the landing page works. And just really quick, I want to take, this is going to be um, way less complicated, not that the landing page was complicated, but um, the squeeze page. Squeeze page is something that you can quickly do in 30 seconds or less. And I encourage you, if you have um, presence on social media, leverage the squeeze pages regularly. You can do a multi-property squeeze page, which is essentially going to be um, search results that would come from your website. You can do a single property squeeze page, which is going to highlight one property that you identify. You can do a seller squeeze, which is going to identify uh, and try to attract a seller to understand 
what their home is worth in the current market. And then you can just do a general market report. But let me show you how this would work um, very simply. Let's go with a single property. Let's say I have a property that I want to highlight. It does need to be an active listing on the MLS in order for the squeeze page to be able to identify it and pull in its um, MLS content. So let me see. I think I wrote down a property that I was going to highlight. Let's see. I have one or two Versailles. So as soon as I start typing, it's going to identify the property. This is the one that I want, 102 Versailles and Cherry Hill. I can um, note that I'm going to, for source purposes, I'm going to put the link on Facebook for this squeeze page. I can create a hashtag for this um, particular squeeze page. So let's, we can call it 102 Versailles. You can call it whatever you want. If you want to be able to um, let's say you're, you're committed to doing this once a week, that you create a task on your calendar. Once a week, you're going to identify a property that is listed with an EXP agent or one of your own properties, whatever the case may be, and you're going to highlight it once a week on your Facebook business page. So maybe what you want to do is call it weekly squeeze, and you want to see how much traffic you can pull into your um, KV Core from people clicking on that weekly squeeze. So again, if the more traffic that you're pulling in, the more you're telling yourself, hey, my weekly squeeze is working. It's effective. You also can identify here on your squeeze page how many times you want people to view before they have to give you their information. So how many times do you want them to click? Uh, I would say in this case, one or two max. If you go beyond that, um, then you're kind of missing out on an opportunity, okay? That's all that you need to be able to create a squeeze page. The property, identify a source. This is going to help you tie back to your KV Core, what platform you were using. So whether it was Facebook, Instagram, um, or maybe some other, you know, Twitter, you can identify the source here, your hashtag, and then you're going to click on generate link and look what happens. It creates the direct link and a shortcut link. I'm just going to use the short link. I'm going to go ahead and copy it. You can also copy it here with these little pages to the right-hand side. First, let me show you what it looks like. Oops. And to do that, I'm just going to copy and paste it right into a web browser. Okay, so this is what will happen when somebody clicks on the link once I post the link to social media. They're going to be able to see the property, scroll through the photos. They're going to get all of the content that comes from the MLS listing. Okay. Now, to be able to use that on my Facebook page, I'm simply going to go to my page. And I'm going to create a new post. And then I'm going to copy the link. It'll take a second to pull in the image. Notice that it's pulling in the primary MLS image. I've got the link right here in my um, Facebook, and I'm going to go ahead and post it. So that's something, squeeze page is something that you can do uh, literally, you know, two or three minutes um, and you're done. As long as you, the, the hardest part is identifying what property you want to be able to squeeze and draw people to. And it doesn't have to be your listing. Remember, um, I do encourage you to at least identify an EXP listing um, because then I think it's going to certainly lend much better to working together with another EXP agent, but it could be any property. You can, if you were trying to break into the million dollar market, then just start picking million dollar properties that are listed on the MLS and start doing a squeeze page on a regular basis. Okay. But so that's the idea of a single property. Multi-property, you would just have to enter a few more components to be able to build out what you want the criteria to look like for your search results. Seller squeeze, you're just providing, you're trying to get a seller who might be motivated, let's say in, in Marlton, for example, to be able to sell their home. This particular squeeze page is going to say, hey, this is what the average home price is in 
Marlton in Somerset, um, you know, in Tom's River. And then you can go ahead and in an effort to attract sellers, post that on your Facebook or other social media platforms. And then market report is going to be more general, more broad, trying to pull in anybody that might have an interest in buying, selling, maybe getting in or out of the rental or investment market, might benefit from some uh, market report information with this particular squeeze page. Okay, so these are the two things that are now really going to start getting the engine roaring in the motor. We did all of these things up to this point. We spent a little bit of time last week starting to rev the engine, I guess, with building out campaigns and creating a newsletter. Now we're really saying we've put all the work into building this platform. Now, how do we get it to work for us? The whole point is how do we draw in leads? How do we pull them in through landing pages, squeeze pages? How do we get them to spend time getting to know us on our website? And then ultimately, what campaigns can we build and design and leverage? Because KV Core has so many pre-built and available for us. How can we leverage all of that to get these leads to ultimately become clients? Clients who later will refer and continue to build out your database. Okay, so that's kind of all the information that I wanted to share today. There's a whole lot of, um, I think, content and opportunity, and I really encourage you to go back and spend some time experimenting, um, create some campaigns, be sure to test them out, send them to your um, email so that you can see what the client experience will be, and if you're unsure and you want to really understand if a campaign actually work in action, don't hesitate to create it. As I've mentioned before, always have an email address in your smart CRM that's for you for a personal email that has nothing to do with real estate, where you can set up a hashtag for test. Then you can go back and send that campaign or initiate that campaign just with the hashtag test. And then once you see how it works and you gain confidence that it works the way that you want it to, then you can push it out to actual live hashtags, um, depending on how you continue to structure and build out and organize all of your contacts. Okay. Does anybody have any questions on anything that we've covered today? Okay, good. It's probably good that I can't see you because your eyes might be glazed over. <laughs> okay, good. Well, I encourage everyone to get started. Give this a try. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. But this will pretty much wrap up everything that we wanted to cover in the last several weeks on KV Core. We're going to probably spend a little bit of time next week as we kick off 2022, just summarizing everything that we've done. And we continue to work to make this content available so that you can go back and stop and start it at your own convenience as you try to put some of these um, resources and tools and processes into place with your KV Core. Remember, this is the best $85 you're going to spend just for this alone. So make it work. 